Great. Um, my name is Nate Foster. It's a pleasure today to have Gang Cheng from Baidu. Um, he's the technical lead for networking, and uh, he has his PhD from NGIT. Uh, and he's going to tell us about some of the uses of P4 in practice at Baidu. Thanks. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Gang Cheng. I'm the distinguished engineer of Baidu and the area tech leader for the networking. Uh, responsible for Bedu's um, technical infrastructure roadmap in collaboration with peer in compute, storage, and hardware. I'm very pleased to share our experience with people today. Uh, first, I would like to uh, give an introduction about the Bedu. Uh, Bedu was uh, founded on January 1st, 2000 by Robin Lee, uh, Bedu's co founder and CEO. Bedu is the world's largest uh, Chinese search engine and top AI cloud company. It's uh, responsible to uh, billions of search recovery from more than 100 countries and the region every day. Uh, serving as the most important way to access Chinese language information while providing access to uh, 1 billion users. Uh, Bedu is also uh, the leading AI company with strong internet foundation. Baidu uh, is one of the very few companies in the whole world that offer a full AI stack, encompassing uh, infrastructure that um, consists of AI chips, deep learning framework, core AI capability, and um, as well as a, an open AI plat platform to facilitate what wide application and usage. Baidu's mission is to make the complicated world simpler through the technology. Baidu has been named by international organization as the one of the top four leading global AI company and um, uh, widely recognized. Um, it's one of the top 50 most innovative company uh, by um, Forbes in 2019 and the, the most smart company by MIT technology in 2018 and 2019. Um, under the trend of the integration of our cloud AI, and the internet, Baidu has formed a new math engine growth pattern with the investment in frontier of AI field, including mobile ecosystem, Baidu Air Cloud, smart transportation, and the intelligent driving, accumulating great potential for future development. Baidu AI Cloud is uh, a major public cloud service provider of China and also number one AI public cloud of China. Um, but Apollo is the one leading autonomous driving open platform. And the Baidu Dual OS is uh, China's leading conversational AI operating system. A Baidu APP, it has a um, half billion monthly activity user. Uh, Baidu's brain integrated the company's general AI capability make availability to over 270 AI capability. We are request on the battle brain has surpassed 1 trillion hits per day. Battle battle is the first deep learning framework developed in China. An operating system in the era of AI, it has attracted 2.65 million developer and served 100 sounds enterprise. Um, as we can see, Baidu has a lot of application and a lot of uh, business. So Baidu, Baidu have to deal with the um, uh, so many data every day and um, you know with so many user requests each day. So as a result, we have to make our infrastructure, infrastructure as a data-centric system. As shown in this slide, we can see Baidu's infrastructure is a huge distribution which includes data center, edge, and the devices. In this uh, distributed system, all the components are involved in compute, storage, and then data storage and data analytics. By doing so, we can ensure to provide a satisfactory service to our customer in terms of speed, security, scalability, and the cost. Uh, this uh, slide gives a brief introduction of uh, our Badu's uh, data center network. Um, essentially, like the most cloud service provider, Baidu's data center network is also a three-tier network, including the Spine, Live, and, and Tor. In our latest data center networking architecture, 
um, networks which is, are interconnect with 100G speed, and that we are moving to 400G interconnection in 2022. Each cluster can support to 30 to 100K of devices. Actually, we can support like go to the uh, 150K of devices in each cluster. The switch are all white box with Sonic as the operator system so that we can ensure that um, um, our network is uh, easy to operate and we can iterate very quickly. Uh, we have three kinds of the parts in this architecture, compute, storage, and service. The service is the place where the gateway and SRB are put. In compute part and storage part, the servers are all dual uplinks connect to the tool. The compute server are either two by 100 G or two by 25 G, and the storage server are two by 100 G. Um, Bedu infrastructure you know, can be viewed as a um, very huge hybrid cloud. The reason is that we have uh, our own public cloud service, right? So our thinking behind is that one of the leverage our public cloud service as the extension to our, to our own, you know, on-prime um, data center or on-prime devices uh, infrastructure. So we build a very big hybrid cloud infrastructure, you know, on, and, and then, you know, in case of the, that um, we need, um, you know, suddenly a lot of our compute or storage resources in a short time frame. You know, for example, in case of uh, like, um, like um, some holidays, right? A lot of people use um, use them, you know, the the map to to for the um, um, to go to the other places, right? For um, so so in this case, it you know our map service requires a lot of uh, you know compute um, resources. So we can leverage our public cl cloud service to provide such a short tempering of a resources to a private cloud. So this is, so by this, um, in this sense, by those infrastructure, infrastructure is built on top of um, hybrid cloud. Uh, this is our hybrid cloud solution of Baidu. So essentially, uh, we build um, a public cloud, um, you know, service or product. We call the cloud smart network (CSN). Uh, with this CSN, we are able to connect, you know, the um, um, the, the on-prem network and the VPC in different region, in different country, you know, together. And and also we are able to connect our private cloud to the public cloud in a, you know in a very fashion manner. Basically, you, we are able to build such a globally connected network in a minute. So, so this is the product we are, we are used. Um, as you can see that in this slide that we are using a BVR, we call it a Baidu watch router that connect a, a different VPC and um, you know, in different region. So, so because we are connected the private cloud to our public cloud, right? With our own, our own business. So the tracking volume and the latency requirement for this solution is requirement is very high you know, in terms of performance, the bandwidth, the cost, scalability, and the reliability, right? So we make, make sure this solution is costing, cost efficient enough and it's able to you know, support very, very large volume of traffic. Right. And also we want it to, you know, even though we are using hybrid cloud solution, we from our own, own business perspective, we want to make sure that our own business have does not see any difference when it, when it use their resource in the public cloud. So which means that you know we need to have a very good latency, you know, very small latency to connect the private to the public cloud. And the scalability need to be very, very a little bit need to be very high. So this is the uh, um, uh, uh, our private cloud. I mean, cl our CSN architecture, or basically what what our network look like. You know, um, when we are using our hybrid cloud solution to connect our 
pri private cloud to the public cloud, right? So basically, as we can see, that our, our underlying network are still partially programmable, right? For example, we have some uh, all, the, all the switches. We have Leo switches. We have Tofino switches. We have like Tomahawk one, Tomahawk two, you know, this kind of switches. So we we still see our underlying network is partially programmable. But for our um, public cloud, as well as our overlaying network, you know, it's already become uh, fully programmable, you know. So, so essentially, as we can see that we have a hybrid, hybrid gateway that's used to connect our private cloud to the public cloud, right? So essentially, uh, we need to make sure we are able to support that big traffic volume between these two, two clouds over there. In the past, we have using the uh, x86 server for us our X, uh, gateway and the SLB. But in for the case of that, we need such a big traffic volume, we have to turn, find a different solution. This solution need to be um, able to meet our traffic volume requirement, the performance requirement, as well as the cost requirement. So, so the um, um, so to address all these challenges, we choose to use therefore Tofino and P4 to build our high performance gateway and build the CSA on top of it. By doing it, we are able to overcome the performance we mentioned in the previous slides, which means that our x86 um, x86 server based the solution that's only able to provide the limited traffic right for, because for x86 based the uh, gateway and the SLB the maximum track track, uh, the maximum throughput it can provide is limited by the number of the NICs we are able to put in the servers right and also it can be limited by the ECMP the switches can support it which which means that you know for example if the maximum ECMP is uh, 64 or 128, the maximum uh, server in each cloud you connect to the switch is only the number of maximum ECMPs you can support it over there. So to, uh, to address this solution, we have to turn for the, um, to use the uh, Tofino switches to build our gateway. By doing, by doing that, we are able to provide 20 tenths of the throughput with the same cost as the x88 based uh, scale base. In the meantime, we're still able to cater keep the advantage of, uh, of the, uh, uh, such as the uh, fast iteration flexibility. So, so this is, um, in this slide, we also provide an overview of our um, solution. That is um, um, how we are going to put the Tofino based gateway with the, uh, the server based gateway, right? And essentially, you can see that when we build, when we, we, we have to use, uh, let's put it in this way, our Tofino based gateway, um, even though it's able to provide so many, so big traffic throughput and uh, the latency is very small, but it also have its own limitation, which is, you know, the table size is limited, right? So as the first, as the first step or the first generation of um, our solution is that we need to build a cluster which consists of both Tofino gateway as well as the server-based gateway. So all the traffic need go to the uh, Tofino-based gateway first. And then uh, if we're able to, for example, if a packet re received by the Tofino-based gateway, if we're able to find a match entry in the table on these switches, then the switch is able to directly um, Send the packet by the um, according to the entry of it found. But if the entry is not found on the switch, we have sent this gateway, uh, send this packet to the server based gateway. Because server gate based gateway has a lot of memory, we assume it has all the entries that knows how this packet should be forward. And then the, the server based gateway, when it receives this packet, it will do the corresponding handling. Um, for this uh, packet. In the future, um, you know, in the previous slide, we mentioned that we build our current solution with, um, with uh, um, 
both terminal based um, gateway as well as the uh, server based gateway, right? Um, in the near future, we are considering building a hybrid device which consists of the FPGA, programmable ASIC, and the CPU. FPGA can be viewed as an um, extension of the programmable ASIC because it, with, with the FPGA, you are able to keep a relatively large table entries. And um, so when, when packet is received by the program ASIC, it first look up its own table size, right? If the pack is entry is found, then the packet will be forward. But if the, uh, the ASIC is not able to find the entry for the packet, it will forward to the IPJ. And IPJ will look up its own table and if the packet can be found, it will, it will uh, you know, do the corresponding uh, handling and forward back to the ACV with some sort of marking. Uh, and the ACV will you find that this packet is already handled and then it will forward it directly. Otherwise, we will send the packet to the CPU and the CPU will know how to handle, handle the, the packet because we assume still all the entry can be found in the memory. This is the enhancement we are going to do. Uh, this requirement is, um, so with this approach, we need, we, we need to use the, we expect that we are able to use P4 to program both the uh, ASIC as well as the APGA. So that the data plan, essentially the data plan can be programmed by P4. This is our expectation. Um, down the road, we expect our data center infrastructure to be a fully software defined infrastructure. Uh, the data center infrastructure is a big resource pool and the networking is, uh, Network, network resource is part of it. Uh, the data center, you know, from our perspective, the data center is an end to end fully programmable, you know, network uh, in which, you know, the Vswitch, the Smarnik, the DCN network are all programmable, right? And every part of the network is, is able to program. That means that, you know, we are able to define our own protocol. We are able to define our own behavior, how to handle the packet in every switches, you know, every component of the network. Uh, yeah, in addition, we expect that, expect that the network can be, um, have a, you know, per packet telemetry and a capability so that we are able to know in a tiny manner what happened to the network, why the packet is job, you know, we're able to know all the tiny behavior of the network, you know, by, by this um, you know, information provided there by the telemetry. Uh, last, we expect our network center to be part of a computing resource, you know, because uh, we view the uh, network security as um, a Linux server with a strong you know, um, networking capability. So we can program it to support you know, uh, some sort of a compute, right? So, um, and therefore we, well, for example, the in-network computing, we expect the switches. That's why we view our network, you know, is a part of our computer resource resources and um, or, or storage, maybe in the future, storage resources of the whole resource pool in the data center. Um, that's uh, my presentation today. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll give a clap since <laughs> we don't have a studio audience. Um, I have a couple of questions, um, uh, mostly about this um, sort of split execution that you have with some of the processing happening on the Tofinos and mm -hmm. some happening on uh, x86 servers. Yeah. Uh, so right now, is do you have a do you have a sort of single program that describes both of these, uh, all of this processing, or are you writing sort of two separate programs and then composing them together? We are two se uh, separate programs that uh, writing them together. In the future, if uh, P4 is strong enough, we expect that uh, if P4, we can use P4 to program both, right? Maybe, maybe if, for example, in the, like I mentioned that we are considering building hybrid, hybrid devices with FPGA, ASIC, and the CPU, right? So, so if we're able to use P4 to program both ASIC, FPGA, and uh, all the data plan in the devices, that'd be great. So the processing on x86, it's not, um... It's not somehow so complex that it would be challenging to write it in P4, um, but uh, just sort of having a, you need some kind of compiler flow that would let you um, uh, sort of take, take a single program and, and split it. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Um, another question I had was, you mentioned um, 
reliability as one of the sort of top level cross cutting concerns. Um, uh, I guess one one potential worry one could have with a with a kind of system like this that that grows more complicated is that the failures could be could be very difficult to even uh, detect, and then you know making sense of what's happened <laughs> uh, could also be very complicated. So, do you find? Um, uh, I don't know if you you know do the operational teams uh, find this a challenge, or or are there some techniques you can use to uh, to, to work around it? No, actually, uh, after we put this Tofino gateway uh, in the production network, uh, we have seen it uh, very reliably running in running it and uh, didn't see any problem at all. So we are kind of very surprised to to see why it's so reliable. Maybe we have did a very good program. I mean, and the second one is, of course, you know, like uh, I introduced, we have make um, the uh, um, the, the Tof Tofino gateway work with the x86 six server-based gateway together at this moment. So essentially whenever we have see any problem with this um, Tofino based gateway, we still have a backup, backup right? Using the, uh, um, the server-based gateway. You know, this is a very good, um, from my perspective, this is a two layer protection, you know? So, so which means, you know, first of all, we, we have seen this Tofino based gateway is very reliable. We have not, not seen any problem so far, but you know, because this is a new uh, device we put in production. So we still use the X8, the server base, the gateway as a protection for this one. Um, but fortunately we have not uh, see any, you know, any Tofino disaster at this moment, you know, all the traffic are handled by the Tofino based gateway at this moment and it does not use the backup at this moment. So do, um, do, do you see uh, the network operators moving to Using programmability to help with with you know debugging or or diagnosing errors, um, or are you finding that kind of existing standard tools, maybe you know the kinds of CLIs or programmatic programmatic interfaces that say Sonic gives you, maybe combined with some you know standard uh, you know uh, this or flow or, or ping and trace route of the, you know, these kind of traditional tools enough, uh, or or do you see uh, programmability helping out the the debugging as well? Uh, this is a very good question. Actually, uh, we are building our own telemetry, um, you know, solution in our network at this moment. Um, but I think it's in the time to um, to 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 you know work um, to make it fully. Uh, I mean, uh, this uh, the whole system, right? We need to need a time to make it uh, fully operate by and understand by our operators team. So at this moment, I would say that uh, we are still. Because we have, uh, we are still mainly use the uh, the old tools like CLI to operate the, the network, or you know, or some other other you know traditional approach. Um, but we expect that in this year, you know, our tiny metric based solution can be running in the in in the network, and uh, our operating system can rely on the tiny metric based solution to 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 address all the uh, you know network issues they have uh, a while. Um, so I have one more kind of open-ended question. Um, if you had one feature that you'd like to see a future version of P4 have, <laughs> uh, what, what would that be? Well, uh, I, <laughs> if, well, from my own perspective, I think the, um, one of the major challenges is that we have so many, uh, see many kind of uh, um, things that can be programmable in, in our um, data center, like we are building our IPG-based uh, SMANIC, right? Or we in my slide, in my slide, I call it the DPU, right? So, but the 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 IPGA is uh, use, we are using different language pro, to program the uh, uh, the IPGA. So, from my perspective, I would like to see you know I want to see the people can be used to program program the uh, V switch, the DP, the IPGA, and the, the switches from end to end. I don't so that you know. And like I mentioned in my last slides, we view the network to be uh, fully programmable end to end, right? So, so that's why I would say, you know, if I want to see a future of a P4, that is, I am able you to use P4 to program all these components in the network. Okay. Wonderful. So I think we'll stop there. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. It's uh, exciting to hear about all the ways that Baidu is using P4 and, and network, program network programmability. Um, and looking forward to seeing what happens in the future.
Thank you. Thanks.